Statistics show that 88% of Americans get married for love, making it the number one reason to get married. Hi, I'm Mariah, and welcome to Relationships 101. And on today's show, we're talking, we're talking everything relationships. First, we'll discuss the good in relationships. Then we will take a look at the dark side of relationships before finally sitting down with our panel to discuss their personal experiences with relationships. So stay tuned for all this and more on this episode of Relationships 101. Do you wonder what healthy relationships look like? If we don't see them that often, that may be because they are pretty rare. Researchers estimate that only 10% of marriages in the U.S. are highly healthy and, are, and happy. Here to share with us their opinions on Relationships 101 are Saraja McGriff and Gabriela Lopez. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the show. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the good relationships. So, your ex texts you. Would you be honest and tell your current partner about this? If so, why? Um, I would tell my current partner because I feel like uh, communication is key to a relationship and so is trust. Yeah. Um, I feel like I would tell my partner, but like, I'd be like, it's not really a big deal. Okay. What positive qualities do you look for in a relationship? Um, communication. Yeah. Trust, like. That's basically what she said. Yeah, I agree. What is more important, physical attraction or chemistry? Um, mm. it, I feel like it's both. Yeah. I feel the same way. Both play a big part in relationships. What are the five most important things every relationship must have? Mm, communication. Trust. Yeah. Um, mm. Mm. Would you say loyalty? Yes. Loyalty. Um, um. I think communication and trust are a big one for me as well. Do you think high school relationships last? No. Um, it honestly depends. Why do you think it doesn't last? Sorry. Um, because like when you get to high school, you see more options. Yeah. So it's like things change. You can't just jump into one and just want to stay there. I agree. When looking for a relationship, do you have a specific type? Yes. Yes. And what is that? Oh. 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 Um, my type would be Hispanics with curly hair, um, dreadheads, oh, football players, that's our players. So like athletes? Yeah. And you, Sir Roger? Um, athletes, dreads, hair, it don't matter. Okay. Being single, how mm -hmm. do you feel on Valentine's Day? Is it just a regular day for you or? Um, yep. It just feels like a regular day to me. Do you do anything with friends or? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Is it really necessary to know everything from your partner's previous relationships? Yes. Um, I feel like it is just so I, I can like know what to expect yeah. and, and know how he did in his past relationship. When do you feel like you should ask about that? Like, would you ask before y'all start dating or in the beginning? Before. before. Do you believe in love at first sight? No. Um, no. Why? No. I'm not going to look, no. I no. just feel like that's delusional. Very. <laughs> okay. Do you think that a couple can be too close with one another, especially early in a relationship? Yes. yes. Why? Well, because, like, if you hang out with each other 24-7, like... Think you'll get, like, tired of? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I agree. How old do you think you should be before you start dating? Mm -hmm. um, I just to whenever me, you're ready, yeah. Ready. Whenever you feel like it's your time to, you know, start dating. Okay. Our relationships aren't perfect. They have their ups and downs. But what exactly is there we should look for out in relationships? Here with us to discuss the bad relationships are Imani Brown and Nadia Mingo. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to the show. Okay, so here are some questions on the bad of relationships. What are your signs of an unhealthy relationship? 
um, like couples who argue all the time yeah. and not communicate about it. Um, also, people who like they distance themselves from their problem, their partners instead of like trying to figure out what the problem is yeah. in the first place. Um, people who let other people interfere in their relationships. You know what I'm saying? That's a big one. For yeah, me too. yeah. Like mm -hmm. when they give their opinions on something that they don't know about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just don't really click with the partner. Like it's like y'all are forced together. Exactly. Yeah. Forcing yeah. their yeah. bond. Okay. Say you had a physical. Say you had a physically and emotionally abusing significant other. How would you handle this situation? Mm. I would probably go tell somebody yeah. because in that situation, it's so hard to get out of. Exactly. And then when you're in a relationship and like you love somebody, you don't want to like get them in trouble per se. Um, so really, it's just about reaching out and trying to find a way out of that situation, even though everything that ins that's like inside of you wants you to stay in it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I understand. And you? Um, I just like I know like it. It can be really hard leaving a situation like that. But, because sometimes, like, you have the odds playing against you, like, exactly. yeah. you have the threats from them, but then you have people who think y'all are in a good, perfect relationship. Yeah. It's like, you got to think about everything, but in the end, you just got to put yourself first. Exactly. Yeah, because it's, like, covered up, like, by a film to everybody else, and they, like, they're like, oh, they're so happy. But, but really they don't know about behind, behind closed, closed doors. doors. Exactly. Right. Okay. Have you ever gotten to the point in a relationship where you've thought about harming your significant other or even yourself? Oh, I wouldn't say that I have gotten to that point in my relationship. Yeah. I have, no. But like, I know there's other people who they get pushed so hard mm -hmm. to the point to where they feel like they have to re like retaliate. And if you were, if you were just say in this predicament, what would you do? Um, I'd probably try to distance myself from them to be honest, because yeah. trying to like harm somebody um, when they're harming you will only end up, like get you both in a situation that you don't exactly. wanna be in. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you, what's your take on cheating? How do you feel about it? Uh, I don't like, like <laughs> that's the one thing like, yeah. I just don't. That's, yeah. like a, that's like such a big pet peeve, like no. not even a pet peeve, like you're done. That's the one, no go, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah that's no, that's no like a, one chances. thing, no, not at all. That's yeah. a big one for me too, I understand. Mm -hmm. Say you want to hang out with your friends, but your significant other tells you to not go or else. What would you do? Or else, else is what? crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or else is crazy. Um, I mean, I probably ask like maybe there's like a valid reason, but if they just seem yeah. to be controlling, then yeah, I would like, be like, yes. okay, you need to yeah. chill out on your own. I'm still, I'm gonna go out with my friends. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you have to talk to yourself. Right. <laughs> okay. What do you think causes a relationship to become toxic? Mm. I just feel like one of the main reasons is all the outside factors. Yeah. Like you see like people putting their business on social media and then like allowing people close to them to get in their head about it and they listen to those people in social media instead of the one on ones with their partner, which I think is really important. I, I, I also like really agree with that because you can't let other people run your relationship. And having communicate, I feel like communication is key. I was like, gonna say communication is a really big factor. Like, if you don't have communication in your relationship, then nothing's gonna work out and it won't flow smoothly. And then especially if you're trying to figure out problems with your partner, with somebody else. Exactly. Like you can't, you can't know your partner's thoughts and feelings when you're talking about it to somebody who has no idea how your relationship really works. Exactly. Very understandable. How old do you think you should be before you're allowed to stay the night at your significant other's house? Oh, I think that I wouldn't. I would say there shouldn't be an age limit, but there really should. Duh. Yeah. Um. I think when you get to the point to where mm, you're both mature enough yeah. to know your feelings and how you want to be with that person, and you know you have a conversation with your parents, then that, that may be like more so important than the age. But mm -hmm. I think. I think really there should be like a, like 16 and yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Maturity, yeah, after that point, maturity and responsibility are play a big role. Yeah, but like if you're like under that age, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, can happen. Uh, yeah, anything can happen. And so it's like mm -hmm. you, I don't think anybody's ready to take on a responsibility of anything like a child or something. Right. Because, you know, something may happen. Yeah. You got to keep that distance apart. All right. What is your definition of cheating? Oh, 
well, there's many different types of cheating. <laughs> yeah. So you could emotionally cheat on somebody, yeah. you can physically cheat on somebody. Um, so even if you're like going out, you're telling all your problems and your thoughts yeah. and your feelings to somebody else, I'm like, oh, that's a little weird because why are you doing that? When I'm your, I as your partner. Again, communication. Exactly. I as your partner can sit here and talk to you about all those same things. Or like, some, you don't have to be physical with them to be intimate with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and physically cheating, of course, being right. with them. Yeah. Yeah. I just think for the most part, like giving, allowing you to give your time and attention to somebody else when you're supposed to be dedicated to this one person. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like the main thing. And a lot of people don't know that there's emotional cheating too. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they just think it's all about physical stuff right. when it's not like, so. It's a lot of different parts of cheating. Mm -hmm. How old do you think you should be before you lose your virginity? Oh, I think again, <laughs> there should be an age limit yeah. when it comes to like being too young, but there's never too old. Yeah. Um, so because like, again, anything can happen. Anything right. can happen, but like also that's something that's very like, it's so publicized now. Yeah. It's so like it's nothing to give it away. Um, and it should it's not important. It's just like something that happens. But I think it should be cherished and I think that people should understand that it's something that they should hold close to them. So I think again, sixteen is kinda pushing it. Yeah. It's kinda pushing it, but at the same time you don't want to go any younger than that. Um I think right. I think people should wait until after high school though to get out of all the hormones. Exactly, I know what you mean. And you? I agree. Oh uh, yeah, I agree with what she said, but I mean, like you said too, stuff happens, so I just feel like as long as you know yourself that you're ready and like, yeah. it's something that you want and you're not being forced to do, yeah. or, or allowing people to influence you to do, then that's what it all comes Yeah, to. it's all about inside like maturity and then how comfortable you feel with the person that yeah. you're doing. Comfort right. Being comfortable during that time is literally one of the most per important things. So as long as that happens. All right. Say, say you find out that you're pregnant by your abusive ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. How are you reacting to this information? I would inform him of the fact that he has a child, but yes. I would not let him anywhere near that child. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, like, as far as, I would get a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, you can't come, you can't touch this child. But I would let, definitely let somebody know, because it's important to know when you've brought something into the world, or someone. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Do you think a relationship can ever recover once it becomes toxic? No. No, not at all. Well, I'm not going to say no so quickly. Like, I want to, but at the same time, like, there is growth. And people do, like, if they really want to, they will work on themselves yeah. to be better. Because I've seen it happen, like, a relationship will start out bad, but then, like, with the communication yeah. and working through it, it becomes, like, a hundred times better. So I'm not going to say no that fast. I think it de also depends on the level of toxicity in the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. If it got to the point to where it was, like, abusive yeah. or, like, you know, a lots of cheating, I think cheating is not something that some people can recover from when they've received it from their partner. And then mm -hmm. also, like, you putting your hands on somebody, they're never going to be able to trust you the same way. So I think that it depends. If it was just like arguments and the lack of communication, then I understand. All right. Well, right. we're going to take a break. That's all the time we have for this segment. We will turn, we'll discuss our personal experience in relationships. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Relationships 101. We all have probably been in relationships, right? We have all had our cringy relationships and so on. Here to give us their take on their relationship experience is Kiaj Shaw and Mariah Jesse. Thanks for joining us and welcome back to the show. Okay, we're going to talk about our personal experience in relationships. So, have you ever been in a relationship? If so, what do you look for in a relationship? Do you want to start? Uh, for a relationship, I look for somebody that I can enjoy being with every day. Have the same mindset as me, go close to it. Yeah. Just somebody I can enjoy being around daily. For okay. me, I personally like someone who's gonna like give me attention because there's no point in being in a relationship if you're not gonna talk to me every day yeah. and be there for me when I need you. I agree. 
Can you describe what your first heartbreak was like? My first heartbreak, it was like, I got cheated on. Yeah. And I've never been cheated on before, so I never like experienced like the trust being broken yeah. before. And I was like, when I had to break up with him, I was like, oh wow, that actually kind of hurt. Like that actually like made me look at relationships differently. Because why am I in a relationship if you wanted to be with someone else in the first place? Exactly, like when you're in a relationship, you don't really think that people would do something like that if they so-called, you know, love you, like you, anything. Kiaje? Not too much to it. Find out I was the only one. Just how to deal with it. Okay. Can you just, what was the worst relationship you've ever been in? When I was like 14, I got in a relationship with this guy. Mm -hmm. And like, it was on and off. And then I realized like, it was getting toxic. Yeah. Like he didn't really like love me, but more of you're here and I don't want to let you go. Yeah, I understand, yeah. Kiyaji. To be honest, I never had a bad relationship. Okay. What's something you used to believe about relationships but no longer do? that love is something that you feel at first, not something that you had to work on. Yeah. But I realized like, as I went on and I got older, like love isn't just a feeling, but like mm -hmm. a commitment. You have yeah. to keep working towards loving someone every day. Because if you don't, love can like, quote unquote, fall away. That love is more than just a sexual thing. Y'all gotta be on the same mindset and all. Okay, so what is your love language? Touch and uh, giving, like gift giving. Yeah. I like showing my friends like affection through like hugs and giving gifts or receiving gifts. Yeah. Because I like that. Kiaje. <laughs> Showing them that you care about them daily and that you love them. Okay. Do you look for astrology in relationships, a certain sign? No. It depends. Because me and Virgos, they, we get along really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have certain requirements in a relationship? Certain things your partner can or cannot do? Yeah, because it's more about boundaries. Because, like, I expect, like, you not to do certain things after I, like, conversated to you like not to do it yeah like i look for like you to be to talk to me if you have a problem not to hold on to that yeah because if you don't then you're just going to hold on to that so i feel like if you can't do that there's no need for us to be in a relationship and like communication is a really big factor in that Kiaja. same thing they're just like not showing the same affection as like to another person while we're in a relationship okay have you guys ever cheated on anyone before? No, because I don't want to be cheated on. Yeah. Why would I cheat on you? It's like, don't do something to me. Like, I wouldn't do something to you that I wouldn't want done to me, you know? Okay. How was your first date, if you've ever been on a date before? It was cool. Some took it to a dance, we had fun. Cool date. I never like been on a date, mm -hmm. but like, the interactions we had like outside of school was just like calming and like chill to me. Do you feel like dates are essential in a relationship? Or? I don't think so, but like they're nice to have. Yeah. Like you don't have to go on dates to show somebody you love them or like you enjoy being time with, spent with them. You know what I mean? I agree. Have your parents ever embarrassed you in front of your date? No. no. All right. How open are you with your parents about your dating life? Slim. It depends on the person. Like, when I went through like bad relationships, mm -hmm. I didn't really tell my parents because yeah. I didn't want them to know what was going on. But like good relationships, I was like, yeah, I met this person and I really like them. I feel the same way. All right, that's all the time we have for today. 
If you have any comments or suggestions, contact us at the address on the screen or email us at learn.tv at lcsd.k12.sc.us. You can see our content on YouTube search Learn TV Langster or on Comporium Cable Channel 114. I want to once again thank all of my guests for being on the show. I'm Mariah Bennett and thank you for watching Relationships 101.